Okay. And let's put up a player card already. Yeah. So this is a group I week one matchup between Floss Two Times Daily and Dami. I believe Dami stands for Dominique. And it's going to be a USA versus Germany map. Um and human versus undead. I decided to show both their season five and season six MMR and records because it felt kind of relevant in this case. As you can see, um, their MMRs fluctuate a bit, both from lack of games in three of the four instances and just yeah seems kind of relevant to show so i'm not sure exactly where their mmrs lie but it, it might be a pretty even matchup uh dami seem to have a good record against human as most undeads do so i decided to give him the slight favorite or Give him the star as the slight favorite in this matchup. We'll see if he shows shows whether it's warranted and he is the favorite, or if Floss can uh, pull out the win here. Uh, Dami definitely plays a lot more, I would assume, unless Floss does have some games. I'm not sure. As you can see, Floss doesn't have a ton of match. Yeah, let's uh, jump into it now. First map, we got Northern Isles. And at the bottom left, we got the man that doesn't even need a real introduction. That's Floss two times daily, playing human. Should know him from the W3 champions. Uh, I don't know his, his exact position, but he's kind of like the community manager or something, I believe. You know, deals with people basically solves problems issues and so on and then at the top right we got dami who i believe it stands for dominique i uh, can't remember where i gathered that from but i saw that name somewhere i think it was on the challenge website and he's playing undead purple and it looks like he's going for a fast hero into ghouls so I'm assuming a Death Knight Harass is coming rather than a Crypt Lord. If it is going to be the Death Knight. Because if you went Crypt Lord, you would generally get Crypt first and get more ghouls right away. Floss on the other hand, playing standard Archmage. Uh, he's opting to keep a gap here, but he can very well close it easily with another farm or a tower. And with his altar positioning, I'm assuming he's going to creep something small green and then expand after. But we'll, we'll see where he opts to go. Okay, he's sending a footman scout out. Sees the acolyte scout coming. A little bit of a defensive tower. I think he could put it here or here. Probably somewhere here would be better to reach forces are under attack. around this area. But I mean, any tower is good if it's around the presence. And he does, he does go for the small green like I expected. Uh, it does end up getting the water elemental perch though, so. A little bit of a mistake, he's going to take a tiny bit of damage here, but it's not a huge deal unless those peasants end up harassed at some point. Which they may, because there is quick death knight. But he actually decides to go for the small green first, creeping the entire camp rather than just getting the item as well. And now the question the is, where does he go next? Does he continue creeping greens or does he harass the item? He does actually continue creeping greens. Where oh his acolyte should have seen Lost go over to the expo, but Yeah the Death Knight's going to be extremely late now. 
uh, Floss does end up losing one Peasant, but otherwise he hasn't actually taken that much damage. Like his footman hasn't taken any damage. One Peasant took a tiny bit, and then his Archmage a bit, but Archmage will heal pretty quickly, so it shouldn't be that big of a problem. Dami, on the other hand, gets Cloak and Sentry Wards. Um, honestly, not bad. Cloak is one of those items that sometimes doesn't do much, or oftentimes it's just sold. But, on the offhand it is used, can actually... actually has the potential to just win the game. Forces are under attack. As you can see though, he did decide to just sell it, take the 50 gold, and move on. I do think it can be pretty powerful, especially early on against human when you're harassing here. You can just hide the Death Knight, come out of Cloak and Core again. It's going to be powerful in that respect, but, but selling it is oftentimes the same type of thing I would do, so I don't know for that. Uh, I do think you should target peasants rather than the actual Town Hall though, because he's not going to cancel this. Now he's just kind of beating some jellies. He does switch to the peasants now, but a little too late. And Floss should be able to clean this up. Getting really close to level 3 now. Dalmi on the other hand is just barely level 2. However, he has reached tier 2. So we're going to see Lich. And does he make a slaughter or does he just tech, tech first? Not sure yet, but he has plenty of wood. For now. The player's forces are under attack. Floss on the other hand, bringing out Militia. I'm unsure of exactly... Oh. He, he seems to be unsure of exactly where he is going with those two. Decides to return them. I think he was planning something and then just decided, oh wait, I'm going to reach level 3. Let's just harass. I don't need to bring Militia for anything. Maybe he thought he wouldn't reach level 3 and was going to creep this with just Militia, I don't know. Yeah, this harass could be pretty strong, however there is a Nerubian Tower here, which... and the Lich coming out, which should deter this quite a lot. Floss doing the wise thing and backing off. But he may... yeah, he might give up the water Lily. But very smart play to just realize that the undead is not only here, with skeletons, DK, but his lich came out. So Footman would die way too quickly. Floss going for a pretty big creep, but by purchasing the shredder and just having tons of normal damage and enchantment water alley, can actually creep this pretty well. The shredder was actually huge to pick off this before the water alley died. Very nice creep by Floss actually. Not something I really do enough myself either, is just picking up the shredder for the creeping, the value of that, and then getting the wood of course after it's huge. He does get caught out a bit here, one footman goes down, Nova of course, very powerful. And a little blocking done, but it's actually just going to get it nova and another footman goes down. But that is two Novas down already, so... And DK is not level 3. So this shouldn't be too bad to hold. He is going to lose the building towers. He does get the cancel off. But it is a little awkward only having one Arcane, and that Arcane is pretty tough to wait. That Arcane was a little bit farther, like here, maybe? Or even just... Yeah, probably like here. It would help a lot more. Because this one really only reaches an arc around this. And other than the Death Knight, nothing really get that close unless they're like targeting present. But it is still scary to dive into, so it does protect peasants. A and the undead decides to back up. But it is just to pick up the third hero. He did reach tier 3 already. Pretty quick tech. And he opts for a pit lord. 
I assume he's going to go for Rain of Fire. Um, he could actually move his Death Knight back if he wants and get higher levels on the secondary heroes. But honestly, it's not bad to try for like 4, 3, 2, and then after that, you feed the rest of the XP on the pit lane and get 4, 3, 3. Something like that is also very, very useful because level 2 Aura is really good. Level 2 Nova is really good. Gloss, on the other hand, has a Sanctum coming up, a bunch of arms, and he's going tier 3. And with attack. these towers coming up, he should deter and um, harass from the undead. Because the undead's going to be too late to cancel them. His main is a little bit weak though. There's only one arcane here. Second barracks coming out. I'm going to go for knights. If Dami realizes that the main is pretty... Uh, Exposed. It could be awkward for Floss, but his expansion is safe. As you can see, it would have been nice if a player's forces are both of these, attack. or at least one of these towers, was at the main. But he does realize, and he is putting one up. Dami, on the other hand, just content with creeping. Maybe he wants to reach that level of 433 or something rather than harassing. He is getting a lot down here though, these footmen die extremely fast to undead spells. And of course no counter damage. So it looks like Dami's playing the game of just get all the levels possible. And Floss on the other hand has a the huge bank. Are under and as soon as he reaches castle, he's just going to spend it all, get tons of knights, Breakers, a couple priests, third hero, and then maybe a workshop and some gyros. And then it should actually be pretty scary for Dom if Lost can reach that point. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, Dom, the undead, does reach level 3 now. Has True Shot, which is extremely strong. Has Heal Wars and War Song, which are extremely strong these things hit then the focus fire from the entire is going to be huge floss trying to get some harassing done um generally not a bad play but i also wouldn't mind him trying to get level 3 mk before all the creeps are gone maybe this scorpion creep would be very viable for him to go for Otherwise, he should consider getting a Zeppelin and then flying back over now that the TP is gone. Orb coming out from the undead. A player's forces and are under he did attack. not buy a new TP. A Zeppelin could definitely be useful. Floss going for a pretty big creep and pulling his ultimate away. This is definitely a tough creep. His Archmage is actually really far. He might... He might lose his MK here because he's a bit too far to save it. Doesn't grab the item. Oof. Yeah. I think that was just a... A bit too big of a creep there. It would have been nice if he just went for the Scorpions instead, I think. And the Archmage probably should have been a little closer rather than here. Should have been, like, here. Possibly, well, I mean, technically the Archimedes should have been like here and the creep should have been here. But if he was going to do this creep, Archimedes needed to probably be a little bit closer. Floss, however, isn't really. No, that doesn't set him too far behind in terms of his, his army strength. But the hero levels are going to potentially play a big part here. Dami has already reached that 433 I talked about earlier, which can be extremely scary. And Floss, on the other hand, is 311. 
almost 4 2 1, but yeah, he is 3 1 1. Still hasn't reached. Like he has 80 food, but he really hasn't reached a critical mass. He, is, oh, he lost his paladin. He does have two more knights in production and two more knights coming in right now. But yeah, his heroes are just way too squishy. I do think Floss was set up in a decent position. Uh, our human player had opportunities, but he just needed to either get more creeping done or maybe get a zeppelin and sneak in from behind. As it stood, uh, the hero hero level disparity was just too huge. Either the zeppelin harass to limit undead's creeping by forcing them back to their base, or uh, creeping yourself so that your levels are more closely aligned would have helped him a ton there. Game two. Looks like it's maybe autumn leaves. I'll show the player card again, because why not? So. First game did in fact go in Dom's favor. He was the one I had favored in the matchup. But I do think it it was actually pretty close there, and I think it'll be close overall. Yeah, back to the game. We do got Autumn Leaves game two. At the bottom left, we got our blue human player. It's floss two times daily. Going for probably the standard opening again. And at our top right, we got the pink undead player, Dami. And it looks like he is going for... Uh, early Death Knight again. And... Maybe he'll do the fast harass, or maybe he'll just creep with skeletons again. Uh, I assume with skeletons you would creep this camp first. Rather than this one. This one's actually pretty tough. I feel, unless you want to invest multiple coils. They're both actually kind of tough, I think, for just solo DK plus Elden. We'll see what he decides to do. The, the little white wolves hit pretty fast with decent damage, so... And then this map I'm not that familiar with, but I know the general layout of the creeps, just not the best creep routes. So I'll give my advice as best I can. Okay, we do see Archmage and we do see Death Knight. Okay, Gummy does go into the graveyard again. Uh, can't actually fit cigarettes here, so he's going to probably put them here, and then maybe here later. But yeah, this is only like a two square gap, I believe. Pretty sure he would have liked his tree there to be one farther attack. over, but this tree was probably blocking it. Okay. Acolyte Scout coming out. Floss gets his water elemental ensnared, which... It's kind of rough, because now his presence is going to take a bunch of damage. But... Okay, he didn't, he didn't actually make an early tower this time either. So, a Death Knight and a Rask could be scary. It looks like Dami is actually just going to creep, as I was thinking he might. And he does, in fact, go for the smaller green here. Having the wolves, letting the skeletons team. And this uh, footman harass is actually pretty powerful because it will put in a lot of damage to the death knight and possibly pick off some skeletons. One skeleton might get done. Okay. Boss does get the skeleton kill. Meanwhile, he is also creeping his own small green. Uh, 
Oh, the footman backed off. But yeah, not not bad actually. He forced the Death Knight to take a few hundred damage, and he got a skeleton out of it while also creeping his own greens just fine. He does get his water elemental and snare again, which kind of sucks again, but it is starting to tank now. However, he did get one of his potent blue. That'll have to be pulled back. And Floss actually has pretty nice item. Gloves plus mantle. Pretty powerful on Archmage early. And then Cloak is very valuable for hiding from undead nukes. So we'll see how well he can utilize it here. Uh, the undead this time is coming across to harass, but the expansion is already going up. And Floss, with a few skeleton kills, will be able to reach level 3. He needs one more here. Death Knight, also still weak, and level 3 achieved. This is looking extremely good for Floss so far. He has level 3. Death Knight's weak, which means the human can harass decently well. And his expansion is attack. basically finished with a tower on the way. Very good for Floss. Very well set up. Uh, now we just need him to produce a few more presents to get more wood. Ooh, this Death Knight's dropping really low. Forced a TP. That is actually huge. Especially because the undead might have to buy a potion here. He does and uses it instantly. It looks like Floss probably saw that or saw that the tech was finished and just decides to back off. There's also an Arubian here. Tommy definitely plays very defensive, knowing Harass can come with a Nerubian. Uh, just as the first game. Oh no. This Ziggurat's actually bad. Because now this fiend is trapped. <laughs> no, fiend, where are you going? He walked in here and then the acolyte's like, bro. I'm blocking you in. <laughs> uh, feels bad, man. The sad life of a crit fiend. He can, however, get it out pretty easily once he notices by just chopping this tree. I think just one tree. I don't think he needs this one, too. But yeah, he's getting some creeping down. He's going to be slightly short of level 3 still, though. Whereas Floss is, of course, hit level 3 much earlier. Or wait, I guess the Fiend can probably get out if he pulls Acolytes off, right? So yeah, the Fiend can actually get out now if he pulls Acolytes off. Doesn't even need a chop 3. The Saras, honestly, isn't killing much, but it is accomplishing a lot because the Acolytes are not like and the undead can't afford a potion because he's not mine. He doesn't have gold. Floss is doing it. Death Knight down. This is huge for Floss. Our human player is showing his stuff here. Gets a fiend pig off as well. Uh, he is losing quite a lot, but with an expansion, it's not a huge deal. And. I believe he cancelled a slaughter as well, because I think there was a slaughter coming up a while ago. Yeah, he does need to be careful of the Nerubian and tier 3 finishing. He really wants this, but he's going to get slowed. He does get the Fiend though, that's huge. And he could always hide if needed. Um, the one thing Floss does need to work a little bit on is his gold spending. He is going tier 3. I think honestly, if Floss did like uh, Barracks plus Blacksmith plus Sanctum, I'd like 2 Barracks plus Sanctum and just went like Mass Rifles plus some Casters and pushed. It could actually be pretty strong just with how much gold he ends up having. 
He's going double lumber mill. He wants a lumber mill to block. And Tommy realizing he's in a bad position. And it is true. He, Tommy is in a very bad position. But Undead can always potentially get some hero nukes to turn the game around. So we'll see what happens. And, you know, Floss, even though Floss has a huge advantage, both economically and hero-wise, he does have a tough time creeping because he only has one footman. And he isn't actually pumping units yet because he's waiting Players for forces are under attack. tier 3 and the knights. Uh, blacksmith coming, preparing for the knights. I actually wouldn't mind if he picked up like a Berserker, maybe even the Mauler. Probably just the Berserker though. But yeah, these creeps are a bit tough to floss. He is getting it done with the Defend Footman, but it is really slow when there's only one Footman. And he's trying to get the XP to the MK. Which is definitely good. Uh, level 4 Arc Mage is also pretty huge. Now that he's already this close to it. But level 3 MK is kind of a requirement to be honest. Dami on the other hand just now gets his Lich out. He had to wait so long for his Death Knight. And now his, his levels are struggling. He's almost 4 but still only fresh level 1 Lich against almost 4 and 2. On the MK. So level advantage for the human alongside uh, expansion advantage is actually pretty huge. And we see a ton of night stuff about to start. And Floss is going to start pushing into upkeep, massing all of the big tier 3 units, getting its third hero. He should have Sundering Blades queued on attack. here. I think maybe he didn't set this in his control group yet. Floss okay. getting some more creeping down. Looks like Archmage going to stick around this time. But he does reach level 4, which is nice. And Mountain Kings starting to also get pretty close to. Uh, a player's forces are under three. attack. Yeah, now he's got the other barracks queued up with stuff. Knights pumping out. Paladin is active. Uh, Orb of Fire, Staff, Invuln. He actually managed to spend all his gold pretty quickly for how much he had. And he still doesn't have a huge army, so... <laughs> I guess it's because he bought Invuln, a player's forces are under or attack. Staff, and second barracks, research, double knight research, maybe even priest research. Maybe not priest research yet. Yeah, just lots of upgrades and buildings. But he is starting to finally uh, pump out. A real army, and this army will definitely be scary for the undead. Especially if Floss can manage attack. to get level 3 and level 2 at least on MK and Paladin. You definitely want both of those levels because the Divine Shield on the Paladin and level 2 Bolt or even level 2 Crap, even it can be really useful. We do see level 3 coming out. Uh, level 3 Paladin is also huge, but just getting at least level 2 Paladin is good so that you can have that Divine Shield to protect him. And now he can actually pass the Invuln if he want the Archmage maybe. Um, 
not the flashiest of items, but honestly not bad in terms of just providing a lot of extra tankiness to his heroes. Okay, splitting off, trying to get his paladin to level 3. The undead on the other hand has done pretty well at catching back up for how far he's behind. Uh, he is a little short of level 3. Uh, score is 1-0 one, one oh for Dami, in, in favor of Dami right now. Uh, they played Northern Isles game 1. Uh, Floss had a really good early game this time though, and has pretty good levels on his heroes. He is now 4-3-3, three, three. just needs to protect his Mountain King. He has already used his holy one. Okay, he had another holy one. I think it was a misclick on the death one. Does he have a staff? Another holy light. Past the end wall. Very nice. Very nice by Floss to keep that MK alive. It was really close though. And I think Dami actually missed a coil at some point by hitting the pit lord rather than the MK. Yeah, Floss is, Floss is doing it this time. He's got a huge army. Got some like, really good levels this time on his heroes. And the knights are just picking through the undead. The Scrooge. And Dami calls GG. The score is 1 to 1. Very nice turnaround by Floss compared to the first game. He got a lot done that he needed to this time by uh, picking off some fiends, picked off a hero, got some decent harass done, got his own levels done by creeping, and managed to reach the shop to buy things like Invuln. Yeah, I can show the scorecard again too, or the player card. I forgot to put a score. I should put a scoreboard during the match, but Keep forgetting. But yeah, I gave the slight favorite to Dami, although oh, it's hard to judge. Yeah, it looks like. Oh my god. Is this actually. Okay, back in the game. Their map pool was Northern Isles, Autumn Leaves, and Tide Hunter. These guys are crazy. Okay, top left, we got our blue undead dummy. He had a rough game last game, but a very strong game first game. Uh, the second game, he actually did start to come back a bit, getting decent levels. But he just couldn't reach level 3 Lich and level 3 Pit Lord fast enough. And was just too far behind economy wise. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see what Dami can do this time. And at the bottom right, we got our red human player. Floss two times daily. Looks like he's going same standard opening. Very common for humans to do so. I am imagining it's going to be Archmage again. And Dami as well, doing the same build as he's been doing every game, which is Fast Death Knight into Early Rod and Creeper Green. You see, I'm gonna hit this frog. And then he's going to uh, creep this with Death Knight and Skeletons. Floss will probably send over a Footman Scout again, maybe to harass him here with it as well, like he did the previous game. And uh, what up, or what up, pro? Uh, and yeah, last last game, the uh, the footman actually did quite a bit of work. It put in a bit of damage on the death knight, forced him to take more damage while he was creeping, and picked off a skeleton, which was pretty huge to, you know, do all that just by sending a early Brass Footman. Okay, we'll see if he gets the... Nice. So Ensnare not on the Water Elemental this time, so it'll actually tank. And 
two of the creeps will be dead by the time water elemental's gone, so not a ton of damage taken on this unit. Dami is in fact going for a small green and has his acolyte scouting. Uh, I imagine Floss will creep this small green without militia and then he'll militia creep this gold mine? I think this gold mine's easier, right? Or are they the same? I'm not totally familiar with this map, but I know this gold mine's pretty easy with like the medics. I forget what this one has though. I think it might be turtles or something, which is a lot scarier. Too bad. Oh yeah, this is uh, game three. Score is one. I forgot to put up sco a scoreboard again. I did a match earlier as well. And I forgot to as well there. Yeah, it looks like Dami just going for creeping again. Going for her. the green camps, just trying to reach level two death knight. She does. Oak and mantle, not terrible. But he forgot the cloak. He has, however, taken a big chunk of damage on his death knight, so it's going to be hard to harass with that. And Floss does indeed go for this top right Murloc. It seems like he is at least somewhat familiar with this map and knows that this camp is fairly easy to creep. Um, he does need to reach level 3 somehow, though. I assume. He will try to venture over to this green to get it. A player's forces are Maybe attack. send a footman like here or here to like scout if the undead's harassing. And then the rest of his army goes here. He is definitely aware that the undead could be coming, but the undead is actually just creeping right now. Okay, he decides he decides this would be a good camp and it is pretty likely that if the undead harasses, he's going to come through here, so Floss would likely see it then. So not a bad call. This will get him level 3. Uh, this Archmage is a machine gun, but he forgot the cloak. Apparently neither of them like picking up the cloak. It's a <laughs> cloak of shadows, literally hiding in the shadows, I guess. And yeah, Dami here is going for the harder gold mine with the big level 7 turtle. This camp is pretty scary. And as we can see, his death knight took a big chunk of damage there. He will manage to eventually creep it, but he's going to have to tank a bit with his fiend. You gotta watch out with his death knight too. Because the level. <laughs> The level 7 turtle does re-aggro to weak units. And Floss was probably distracting him here. He actually picked off three ghouls already. I was a little slow to show that, but yeah. Looks like three ghouls died, which is huge. Actually huge. And Dami was forced to buy a heal potion with all the damage he took. I believe this was Dami's loser map, but he doesn't seem that familiar with it. Maybe he just forgot it was in the pool. I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, neither of them have played that many games this season, so it's possible Dami doesn't have much experience with this. He just didn't want to play some of the other maps either, so this is what he got. Yeah, this is looking good for Floss again. Death Knight is weak and having to hide. Fiend died. Acolytes have been pulled and finally they pulled back. Dami does still have quite a few coils though, so this Archmage needs to be very careful. But Dami does manage to hold on. Our dead player is starting to stabilize, however he has lost an Acolyte. He lost all his ghouls. And he's just low on resources and uh, food count. Having to rebuild ghouls as well. No slaughterhouse yet, because he has no wood for it. Floss on the other hand, sitting with a pretty big bank. 
blacksmith coming. Uh, starting to do all his macro right now. I'm about to reach tier 2. And we'll likely see the Mountain King come out. But yeah, Flosta is pretty good at getting his expo up. And then putting pressure with level 3. The biggest thing he needs to work on, from what I've seen so far, is just macroing well. But so far this game he's actually done pretty well. He's, he's used up his resources. He has his upgrades coming already, he has tier 3, second hero coming. Like this game is showing uh, all the really good things Floss can do. He's in a very good position here. Dami on the other hand had an extremely good showing in game 1, but the last two games he's struggled a bit with uh, his hero taking too much damage with his creep drops doing the solo death knight creep with skeletons and because his death knight was weak when floss came over to harass uh, he was just able to do too much damage and Dami just fell the behind in the uh, economy needs to be a little careful here okay, let's pull it back it's a claw pretty strong village solo creeping the mk here arc mage is full of back Archmage might have been in range of that. It looks like the MK got the full thing, but it was close. Oh, and we see the Zeppelin come out. I was thinking we could have done a Zeppelin in game one, but looks like we will see it here in game three. It can definitely be very powerful. See if he decides to go off on the left side and then up. It'd be a good choice because that's where the undead has crept already. So undead will likely be topside and or coming over to the expo. But yeah, it looks like our undead player is just trying to continue getting levels. He's a very big fan of just creeping rather than harassing. He's confident that uh, once undead gets hero levels, they can just nuke whatever they need to and win the game that way. And it definitely can work. It's not a bad plan. But his army is a bit weak now from the losses he took earlier. So we'll see how it works out. Loss on the other hand is actually just going to go creep. Um, I believe this red camp is actually fairly easy for a red camp. And it only drops a big consumable like yo wards rather than like big aura item but these yo wards are actually pretty decent um however it is a bit slow to heal up fully here and floss also realizes that and decides to just continue on with his harass he reached level 3 mk as a level 3 archmage of course from before our undead player on the other hand also has reached level 4-3, which is pretty huge. But the problem is his army size is quite small, and Floss has already reached tier 3. Paladin and Knight's coming out, and he's about to Zeppelin drop these Acolytes with at least two of them probably dropping. Oh, and he needs to drop the MK. Drop the MK. Oh. A little missed miss micro there he somehow he somehow missed his zeppelin drop it like just kind of floated there for a while and he forgot to drop the mk which the mk bolting one of the Acoly acolytes would have been huge to get a free kill on it basically not a huge deal though he at least forced the tp he can always go back with another harass or save the zeppelin to pick up weak heroes attack. or knights because the undead might not pick up web at all uh, I don't think he has it researched and he's not doing it now either A-bomb coming out loot and 
around it and goes back to this creeping. Wants to get more items, XP, and just win that way rather than pressuring the next one. Floss, on the other hand, is doing much better this game and the previous game with just getting the creeping done. And that's that's what really matters, is keeping up somewhat in levels. And as we can see, he's 3-3 you know, he's three, three, and he's starting to get a bunch of XP on his panel as well. Um, I do think it would be good to pull the MK and Archmage back here and get level 2. This golem is definitely pretty scary though, but... Okay, he does pull them back. Yeah, level 2 Paladin is pretty huge. He does need to pass the orb at some point. Oh, and we got a fight coming up. Floss is not really ready for this, but he does end up forcing the TP with the nuke on the unheard hero. He, however, gets his knight picked off. I do think the undead was actually stronger there, but it was kind of close. Um, our human player does have a Scourge Bone Chimes though, which is obviously huge for knights. Are under attack. So that should help him a lot. And he should be getting another upgrade soon, probably. Like a damage upgrade maybe on his blacksmith. We'll see if that's what he opts for. Otherwise he just has more knights queued. And we do see another fight right away. Fiend getting picked off in the back position. The award coming out for our human player. Paladin getting nuked, but instantly Divine Shields it. And Reign of Fire coming out, but not to too much effect. And the Death Knight is on the awkward position. Has an invuln, pops it to save himself. Pit Lord starting to drop weak, but the MK is out of mana for now. And there's no level 2 aura yet, because the Archmage is still a little short of 4. The Death Knight is caught out, it's picked off. That's level 4. Now we're going to see the level 2 aura, which will help the MK keep his mana up. Pit Lord also stuck, and now the human army is just starting to run over the undead. Very nice showing of Floss to come back after that first game and get his production out and done, get some harassing done. And Floss ends up taking it. I gave the slight edge at the start to uh, Dami, but I obviously wasn't too familiar with how their strengths were. And Floss showed he could he had put up the fight, ends up getting the win over Dami 2-1. He won on Autumn Leaves and uh, Tidehunters there in game two and three, with Dami winning game one on uh, Northern Isles. All three games were pretty similar in their style as well. Uh, fast Expo from the Human, Archmage MK Paladin, and then Undead doing a Death Knight with uh, Rod creeping, Fast Death Knight, Rod creeping, and then just lots of creeping afterwards with Lich plus Pit, Pit Lord. And overall, pretty close games. Uh, definitely uh, Floss getting quite a bit done in the mid game on the second and third game, slowing down the undead, making him pull his acolytes away. So that helped him a lot. Uh, here I'll show the little player card I made. <laughs> and I'm not a graphic designer or anything, but yeah. Should be catching my voice. Bro. Test, test, test. Should be catching. <clears throat> Yo, Floss. Floss. Yo, let me unmute your stream. Okay. 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 Um. Can you 
talk. Let me see if I can hear you. Hello. Hello. Oh, perfect. Excellent. Yo. Thanks for casting. I was actually pretty nervous. I didn't really <laughs> want to do that, but I was like, whatever. I'll get. I'll get wrecked. It's fine. <laughs> No, that's good. You put up a good showing. Yeah. Uh, you definitely fixed most of the mistakes from the first games as well, I feel. I think from my uh, judgment of the games, there's a bit of a rough uh, creeping as well as macro from the start. But each game, the second and third game after that, those kept improving. You got your creeping done. You got your levels. And that just helped a ton to get done when he needed to get done yeah oh. my gym guys like paz monk uh <laughs> jack like everybody they're all like can you build peasants can you just <laughs> one button just press the button i can't but <laughs> i get there eventually yeah honestly that's that can actually be a big thing i have i have a couple people in my clan even people that are like 1600 mmr where it's like Yo, you're doing good, but you really just need to build stuff. And that, that's that's honestly a big part is sometimes just falling behind and building stuff can can really set you behind. But you did fix those by the end and you got you got your stuff out in a reasonable time and got your levels uh, you needed. Even in the last few days, just because they've been uh, kind of making me grind undead. Grinding means I played five matches in the last couple of days. But with them harping on it, the matchup feels like a lot easier when you have units and buildings and stuff, <laughs> as opposed to an expo and 4,000 gold and 100 wood and no units. Okay. So, so I'm sure my macro looked horrible to you. Meanwhile, I'm going to watch these replays and be like, holy shit, this is the best macro I've ever had. So <laughs> we're probably training in the right direction. The, the third game was really good. You were, you were at like 44 food with like 100 gold and 150 wood which means oh, you, were, you were spending your stuff you had your tier 3 coming your mk coming out like that that was a really good showing feels good can't wait to watch that replay <laughs> yeah how, how are your thoughts on the game where do you where did you see yourself what did you think could have done better maybe or um it's i still don't have an idea about how much how many peasants I should have. And I never think about whether, like really, honestly, I just need to go to the very much the basics. How many peasants should I have at each base? Cause I'm just mindlessly clicking peasant, 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 peasant. Uh, definitely macro, um, but also micro. I, I kind of, when it gets to the big fights, I sort of just close my eyes and pray. <laughs> um, and when you have, when you get ahead, like I did in games two and three, like you can do that with, yeah. 25 yeah. extra supply of knights you literally just a click and uh and i go to paladin and just spam heal even if it's like not on cooldown yeah <laughs> it's just like that's probably the only spell you'll see me use because i'm only controlling my paladin and maybe staffing so i gotta get a little more comfortable in big fights but i i really it's just if i wanted to get good at this game which i sort of do <laughs> um uh, it's all basic stuff uh, creep routes, learning how to creep. The floss special is finishing a creep camp and having all my footmen with zero health and my water elemental with full health. So I need to learn how to creep. Uh, I need to learn how to macro. And in big fights, I need to learn how to use my spells on cooldown and protect my heroes, I think, are the biggest things. Like very big, easy things to practice if I didn't just, if I played more and thought about it. But I don't play and I don't think about it and I have a bad attitude. So <laughs> I guess I go, oh. I think your creep routes overall were pretty good. Uh, the first game, you definitely, after level three Archmage, just didn't get any creeping done at, to begin with, though. But yeah, yeah. but apart from that, your actual routes were good. Um, the main thing is trying to get your water elemental not ensnared or purged. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, oh, on the, but otherwise the actual yeah. routes, the actual routes were good. So. I mean, you have that down at least. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it's funny. I got my water on that purge on the very first <laughs> camp. That's the only thing I practiced. <laughs> my my advice for that is I've usually done best when, you, when I actually summon the water elemental before engaging the creep, and uh -huh. then you you just select like your, your entire army and then right click whatever you need to right click, 
and as they all walk in it they actually ensnare like the footmen and like if your footman attacks first they the footman should get purged things like that yeah i'll definitely work on it uh, do you play I, do you play much human or you're mostly elf i'm right? mostly elf yeah but i've played tons of random in the past and yeah, when you're i've good, a lot of races and a lot of my knowledge comes from just watching tons of games so yeah. i've seen lots of all the races so I, I know general stuff i don't know as much about autumn leaves and tide hunters though <laughs> to be honest yeah when we were doing so. when we were doing vetoes uh it was like left we both had vetoes and there are only the new maps left i think we were both <laughs> playing this game of chicken like is that, is gonna be the new app? Am I gonna be the new app? But I kind of like Autumn Leaves. I've I played on it a fair bit. I actually yeah. win versus. It's one of the only maps I can win versus Undead against. Yeah. I do and think I, I haven't played that much, but I also like it. So you know, I figure <laughs> yeah. if neither of us know the map, that's probably advantage me because <laughs> when I'm playing it everywhere else, I'm I also don't know the map. So if we're both in the dark, like that's a good thing. Yeah, I, I do think your creep routes were pretty good on them. You went for the right gold mine on tide hunters with those small murlocs to expand yeah. rather than the the big turtle. Definitely have made that mistake before. You only need to make that mistake once, and then you're like, oh, these mm -hmm. gold mines aren't the same. Yeah. All right. When and you then, can do just militia. And then on the other side, Dami, on the other hand, he actually ended up trying to creep the big turtle with like three fiends, and that, that hurt him a lot. Uh, he def he probably doesn't know the map then. That's that's yeah. too bad. <laughs> yeah. You only have to make that mistake once. Too bad. Too bad that it was a weak match. And, that, and then it it also happened at the timing where that was where you were uh, going to hit him, and you ended up picking off like three ghouls and an acolyte, which is just huge. Oh, he was he was I was he was creeping the turtles while yeah. I was burning the ghouls. So so crazy. you like you completely demolished what he was doing at that point. It was just a good very good timing and. I mean, your your route that game and where you positioned your units were good as well to spot if he was going to pass you. And uh, if that happened, that was entirely unintentional. But <laughs> I'll have to watch and see what I did. Well, I just mean after you crept the expansion, you kind of positioned a little bit outside, but then you decided to get level three from the small green in the center, knowing yeah. that the undead was most likely to come through the center if he's going to harass. And well, they told me that the, the mates that taught me how to play or trained me over the last few days were like, don't leave your expo unless you know where they are and put some people in vision. Yeah. You know, if you're going to creep, creep close. So they drill that into me because yeah. my middle name is creep and then just <laughs> click the undead right base and I'll be like, I'll have to get two hits on their uh, shop and my entire expo is dead. It, it, no it's pretty good. So, um, yeah, aside from the games, how are you feeling about your group? Uh, where do you see yourself placing? Uh, like, what are your prospects on that? Um, give me a second to look at it. I mean, Domi was is pretty high MMR. Um, so if I have a good showing versus him, I think I should be okay. I, I think my MMR right now is like you know right i think it showed up as 1200 but that's because i just rage quitted a bunch of games just now <laughs> <laughs> i'm probably to be like i'm between a 1300 and a 1350 player and maybe could get up to 1400 which and i think what 50 percentile play is 1450 so i don't know what the level of here i'm gonna open up the let me see if i recognize any of the names i'm feeling pretty high right now i'm not gonna lie uh sean, sean mcnab he plays Crip Lord pretty strong. Um, yeah, I saw him play yeah. uh, Ning Zun. Other We've early. definitely traded games, um, but he also plays more. He, he will grind. He's on my team, uh, on my GW, my uh, GNL team. So maybe I'll just hope that my match versus him is after the patch goes live. So that's kind of the play for that one. Okay. Uh, Ewar, I'm pretty sure, is like legit new. So there we go. Uh, Method Man, I beat him on ladder. Um, well, there's a lot of undead in this group, huh? That's good. I, I actually kind of <laughs> love the undead matchup right now. Dan, 
is an orc player, I believe. I beat him last time we played. I, I feel honestly, I feel good about this group. If I beat Domi, I mean, I better now that I've said that. I think Sean, I don't know anything about Ning or Habitant. Uh, I think Sean is probably the other big competitor. Yeah, I think I think Ning Zhiyun actually ended up 2 one Sean McNabb earlier. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, then Ning Zhiyun 1, Sean McNabb 2, me 3, Method Man 4 is my... Is my uh... Oh, well, Domi's good too, though. Yeah, yeah, I actually, after looking at like uh, yours and Domi's record a bit, seeing your recent stats for the last couple seasons... I actually gave Domi the slight favorite in your matchup, but you ended up pulling out, getting the win there. So that was pretty huge. Uh, yeah, you had a really I'll, good showing. The, <laughs> you had a really good showing the last couple games, or in the last two games, to uh, hit your timings properly. Yeah, and, and that first match, I mean, it started off bad, but I was still kind of in it. And then that creep jack at the bottom right red right, <laughs> was uh, brutal, yeah. and I'm like. I think my MK died before I even brought my vision back to the army. It was not good. It was a yeah. full-on heart attack panic situation. Like, no idea what to do. Yeah, that camp is, is actually pretty tough. Yeah. And I think he only had, like, footmen at that point. So it probably <laughs> yeah. just took too long to creep it. Magnetar Reaver is like, oh, <laughs> all right, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any last comments, I guess? Anything As always, oh, man, looking at the group above me, Bro Rush. Man, these groups are strong, actually. Like, <laughs> I'm in the bottom group, Group H. Group H got some ballers in there, too. Uh, yeah, I mean, G I think WU League is definitely a little, it's stronger than Jim at the bottom. Uh, what, are my, what are my last thoughts? Thank you to Jim, Paz, Qbert, Monk, Cookie Bud, everyone that trained with me, Kaiser. Everyone's balling. It's a good group. <laughs> fun. Trying to learn how to have fun with this game instead of just pure rage because <laughs> it's it's definitely easy to rage. <laughs> this game is so hard and so frustrating, and everyone's so good at it. <laughs> just brutal. Trust but me. But I do like it. I do like the people that play. So I guess I guess I'll stick with it. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. Even when you get good, it's it's still very easy to just rage at like everything. Oh my god, that's the worst. Like, <laughs> side and bizarre hop into chat, they're like, God, I fucking suck at this game. They're like, you are literally 0.1%, so <laughs> why don't you shut off on me sometimes? Yeah. People beat me with Pit Lord first as human, you know? <laughs> yeah. Alright, that's all I got. I'm gonna go back to bed. It is 3.15am <laughs> right now, and I have work tomorrow. Alright, well, thanks for the games, thanks for the interview. And Yo, thanks for the cast. Can't see. wait to watch Rod. Hope okay. Domi's not too mad. I'm sure he thought this was an easy win and feel bad that I actually took it from him, but feel free to hit me with the G at the end. That's my favorite. I, I definitely talk quite a lot during it to give uh, a lot of my thought process, so hopefully there's some stuff to learn from, I guess, from that. All right, really appreciate it. Can't wait. Yeah. Um, Thanks, dude. Yeah, see ya. Well, that was Floss. Gets the two win over Domi. And he's uh, sitting decent in his group now. He's feeling confident with uh, where he can position in his group as well. But um, that's going to be it for me for tonight. It's definitely kind of late, even later for Floss himself. <laughs> 